Hi, my name is Burke Johnson, and I'm a professor at the University of South Alabama. And uh, I'm a research methodologist. I've written a couple of research books, such as the one you might use if you happen to take IDE 510 research methods. That would be this book right here. Basically, there are three different research paradigms in educational research and beyond. And those are quantitative research, which was the dominant research approach for roughly from 1920 until 1980. And then um, qualitative research came to become very popular. And then uh, starting in the uh, late 80s, 90s, and especially after the turn of the century, mixed methods research has become a third research paradigm of major importance. Quantitative research is one that students will know the most about because they learned it in their high school sciences, science class, and you know we hear about the scientific method and so forth. So, um, so quantitative research is more of a confirmatory or top-down approach. That is, uh, we, we state our hypothesis, uh, which, uh, and then we say the kinds of observations that should occur if the hypothesis is to be supported or not. And then we collect data, check data, see if hypothesis is confirmed or not. So that's, that's a top-down um, approach. And quantitative research uh, values objectivity very, very much. Uh, it views human behavior as predictable. That is, quantitative research is trying to find what is predictable in the world. And as a student, um, your textbooks are trying to find things that are predictable. That is, when we make recommendations about what to do under certain circumstances, we're, we're saying that, uh, that, that we can make some predictions, and in these situations, this is what one should do. So that's a, a strong position. So we're trying to, quote, explain the world. Um, quantitative research also hopes to generalize its results. So it, it's hoping that you won't have to tailor everything all the way down to the individual level. It's, it's searching for broader solutions that could work uh, for subject matters, for schools, for even the nation, like how to, how to teach reading. So in many ways, quantitative research is looking for that. And it's also, quote, searching for the truth. Uh, and ob objectives of quantitative research include numerical description, prediction, and explanation. So again, we're trying to explain the world. And quantitative research uses the language of variables. We're always looking at variables and how variables are related. And, and then finally, quantitative research is statistically analyzes the relationships among those variables. For example, there's a correlation between X and Y. What does that mean? Is, uh, qualitative research is an exploratory or bottom-up approach. So rather than coming in with a, a theory, it's going to say, let's go out into the world and see what's happening. So, and let's learn from the, wor the things we see in the world um, rather than somehow always knowing what my hypothesis is. So that's the difference between confirmatory research and exploratory research. Exploratory research is going out to learn from the bottom up and learn without prior knowledge. So that is very, um, very much a part of qualitative research. Uh, in qualitative research, truth is, is more relative. That is, uh, different people have different perspectives, and they like to call those multiple truths. Like, for example, what is a good school? Um, different people will have different opinions on that. And, and in a sense, those are different truths about the school. And um, qualitative researchers would, would talk more about human behavior being unpredictable. So rather than looking at the average on a set of scores, they're going to be interested in, in the variation and how people differ. And, and as you probably heard, I bet, um, uh, I think students are trained, still trained on constructivism, for example. So that's kind of a um, qualitative concept. Um, qualitative research is very good for generating theory, that is, constructing theory. Rather than testing theory, it's going to come up with the theory. Uh, objectives of qualitative research include description, very good with describing the world and in its complexities describing it. Like each school, each classroom, almost each day is something complex and to be described and studied. Uh, it's also good at exploration, as I said, and it's good at understanding. 
So qualitative research is really good at understanding the perspective of the other person. So it wants to go into that person's worldview. Um, qualitative research also studies groups and individuals in natural settings. So rather than using a laboratory, it's, it's more interested in going out into the real world, uh, real classrooms, and, and seeing what's going on there. And then finally, and I kind of mentioned this, seeks an insider's view. So um, to understand what it's like for students from their perspective. That's what we're interested in. Or teachers from their perspective. So we're not going to just go in and test the theory. We're going to try to explore and listen to and learn uh, teachers' perspectives and students' perspectives and students' ways of understanding things. And we're going to try to get into the, the eyes of the students and others. Uh, data collection includes interviews where we go interview people and talk to them. And interview is good because we can, we can dig into hows and whys and, and uh, tell me more. Um, observations, uh, participant observation is a really good qualitative approach where we go out to the world and experience what is happening rather than just look at it from a distance. Uh, field notes, open-ended questions on questionnaires. So rather than giving a pre-described set of responses, uh, uh, check A, B, C, or D, or, or on a five-point rating scale, are you one, two, three, four, or five, you leave blank space on the questionnaire where people will give you their answer in their own words, from their perspective. So this will take us into their world a little better than a closed-ended question. And then we search for patterns and themes in the data. And then finally, mixed methods research. Um, basically, it's a combination of these two. Mixed methods research came about because we said the things that I just mentioned are important. Which ones? Both of them. We like what qualitative had to say, and we like what quantitative had to say. So we have a lot of respect for both of those viewpoints, and we want to bring those two together. So in a nutshell, or real simply, or in a one-line kind of statement, mixed methods research wants to bring those two together and capitalize on the strengths that they have. And when we do that, we can get a, a fuller, deeper, uh, wider, better understanding of the world, both in its generalities and its complexities. And, and kind of related to that, mixed methods research is, is, I think, good at helping us to obtain practical theory. Just a minute ago I said that um, quantitative research is good for theory testing, qualitative research is good for theory generation, and uh, another thing qualitative research is real good for is help us to see how theories vary by context. So mixed methods research can help us to uh, generate and develop practical theories. That is theories that should work in your classroom where you might be. It's both confirmatory and exploratory. It, it, it views part of the world as objective and part of it as subjective, and we can study both of those. So it, it respects both objectivity and subjectivity. Um, it studies knowledge in about specific contexts. So if you want, um, as well as more generally. So that's where I was doing that practical theory thing. Because theories often have to be contextualize for them to really work. Um, for that to happen though, we need really well-trained teachers like you guys to, um, to uh, adapt them. And let's see, human behavior is partially predictable. See, I'm kind of taking the middle road here. Uh, objectives include explanation, understanding, multiple perspectives, as I mentioned a minute ago, the teacher, the student. Uh, the uh, higher level administrators, parents, you know, we, we're embedded in systems and all those different perspectives and understandings can help us often to come to better solutions for the things that we're dealing with. Um, mixed methods research studies multiple contexts, perspectives, or conditions. Uh, we collect quantitative and qualitative data. Uh, and data consists of variables and words and categories and images. So all of those are part of mixed methods research. So it's, it's a both and kind of approach. Uh, quantitative and qualitative analyses are used, presents multiple viewpoints. Uh, so that's a little bit about mix. And again, just to make it simple, it's going to use some of both of those things. 
some of the qualitative and some of the quantitative, and it's going to try to create a, a synthesis, that is, where each adds something to the other and we get a better product.